What are we doing? I'm admiring that pretty fantastic mug. It's not really a controversial statement either, so. No, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction feed. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter. Twitter. Well, juicy Golden Ten. Thanks to so Patreon. Follow us on the camera. Read about the Nation Squad. Juicy. And follow us on our personal YouTube channels. Links in the description below. Today we're reacting to an informational video. This is called, uh, let's read this whole thing. Druba Ghosh demonstrates the Sarangi. Read all this. This video is a demonstration about the instrument called Sarangi. You have reacted to a couple of videos where Sarangi was played among other instruments, but you haven't done an in-depth video about how it works and what it can do with notes and compositions, be it Eastern or Western music using different types of bows. It is a very complex instrument, very hard to learn, Sarangi is also said to be the most closest to resemble the sound of the human voice. P.S. Watch the namesake. <laughs> that's, that's right up there. That's right behind Bahubali too. <laughs> well, the namesake. Now there's one guy that, that keeps telling us to watch, and it's this gentleman right here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, we've seen this instrument before. Yeah. Beautiful instrument. Strings cry. This one mourns. This sounds like Mahesh K. Yeah. Because he, yeah. he's all all strings can can weep. This one like like really really sobs. <laughs> Other is basically vibrate. one piece of wood into which the wooden pegs are inserted. The belly is hollow, carved out, covered with parchment, goat skin. The foot of the bridge touches the rim of the belly. That itself transmits the sound. We have three, three main strings, mm -hmm. mostly of all gut strings and about 30 to 35 sympathetic strings of thin gauge steel. Did he say 30 to 35? Mm -hmm. The three main strings are of gut, but I use the lowest one. I use the metal string from the cello. The strings are tuned, the main strings, the tonic of the middle octave, lower fifth and lower octave. And there are 30 to 35 sympathetic strings made of thin gauge steel. They are tuned to the notes of the raga or the scale. There are four sets of sympathetic strings. There are two on top tuned definitely to the scale. And you see those small bridges uh -huh. which give a special timber, some twang to it which yeah. excites the, the other yeah. uh, sets of Right, uh, the sound comes out and makes the other strings vibe. Like, so we have the side sound. series, which is again, and also tuned to the scale. It sounds like a harp. And there are 
underneath chromatic strings. Wow. It has a easily playable range of three octaves and the fourth is used only for harmonics. Here's the harmonic. Here it is. We don't press the string downwards like in the cello, uh -huh. I but we play that. with the cuticles of the index, middle, and ring finger. The cuticles. There are two styles of playing. One is on the edge of the cuticle and the nail, wow. which I follow. He's clearly playing. And the lot. other style is purely about the cuticles, which forms thick, thick calluses. When I began learning, I played with the second style, purely on the cuticles. And then so, I gradually whoa, came wow. across a teacher who, a great master who showed me this technique it of playing painful. on the model. I'm sure it is when you start. That's all on the cuticle? Looks like he cut himself. Things like, Same. which I borrowed from string instruments, plucked instruments. This is never done on the sarangi, traditionally. I was gonna say, that sounds like a they would play. violin. Uh-huh. The traditional sarangi bow, horse head. Controversial bow, German style, and I would hold it like this. I like this in that sense to come to very low uh, energy levels. This is a very actually it's an adaptation of the Western bow, but used in India for a uh, string instrument, which is a hybrid between the sarangi and the sitar. It's called Israj. I use this because it gives me shorter strokes and I can paint more number of strokes with this. It cannot generate much volume with this because of its weight is light. Now some Indian bow maker has tried to make a hybrid between the traditional sarangi bow and the contrabass bow.
pre-grace notes and post-grace notes. Let's have it executed in high speed. Mm -hmm. One variation is hmm. the reverse of that, that becomes the third one. Another variation. The most common is murky or what you call mordant going like this horizontally uh -huh. we take an arc we would keep the finger Underneath. on the middle point it looks like it would like and go rip your finger open the finger goes like an arc if I do the arc system Slide within the rug, but move over many notes instead of one to, to, from point A to point B. Like, for example, We rather use uh, expanded vibrato, what we call andolan, like hmm. it's almost like a slide. Speed of doing that, I have no you idea can't be doing it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has to be. It's like vibrato in slow motion. There, harmonic's gonna start lower and then go up above. Mm. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. 
Some more combinations can happen, but this, these are more uh, building up of uh, brick by brick. But if I want to take artistic leaps, so many things you can. So do. I'm not playing. I won't. I'm. Whatever. What I would think of is. But I'm playing. So this gives this small. Uh, Touch phrase helps me to get more mm -hmm. uh, opens up many more windows for unfolding. Like so many. I do uh, mostly is to make my own transcriptions below this stuff in the Indian Saragama. Okay. Uh, this is one. Sometimes I just write uh, the idea how you want it. You know, if it's a passage where you don't dictate uh, a set of notes, but you say you want this kind of nuance to emerge, then I would make some kind of symbolic. Uh, things there and maybe if you indicate certain notes i would write uh, just graze over those notes you know like that ideally recording and the notation because i would at the subliminal level try to make a picture visualization of the notation i'll not use it but it still plays a role in giving the time uh, line pilu rag pilu the basic scale Uses flat seventh and sixth natural. Natural third. The ascending and descending orders. That was cool and informative. Oh man. Very informative. Uh, it's like sitting in a freaking music class at a doctoral level. Yeah. Who's just, I'm sure he's like an whatever you call the math and Ustad, Ustadji, Ustadji. whatever. Uh, but it's like if Ustadji sat down and broke down the tabla. Right. It's <laughs> which would be insane <laughs> uh, for you. But that's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And you understood a lot more than that than I did because he was saying a bunch of words that I know are musical words, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know what they mean. Well, and there's some I didn't know, <laughs> but like there's several in there, like when you're talking about um, grace notes, which are any grace notes or notes that are outside of whatever you're going to be playing or supposed to be playing, which is a lot of those. And there's different styles of grace notes Yeah. where in, in rock music, you would know that it's anytime mm. they're taking a note, they're bending it yeah. and it's not written that way and they're adding their feeling to yeah. it. 
Uh, and then vibrato, you know vibrato. It's the vo it, Singers control their vibrato, or at least should be able to control their vibrato. It's the capacity in the voice to have a tremble in it and then oh, come out. Gotcha. So they go, ah, oh, okay. that's the vibrato. Gotcha. You can do that to any, because these are strings. Uh -huh. Your vocal cords are a string instrument. So any string instrument can have a vibrato as long as it's, I mean, the hardest one to do that on is a, a piano, because it's just a straight hammer strike on it from inside. But those, any bowed instruments that you have the... And I didn't even, re did you realize he was doing cuticles until he explained it? I thought no. he was just doing, I i didn't know a string, I thought all string instruments were on the tips of the fingers. That's what I thought, that looked painful. Very painful. That looks like, Cause I feel like, like, especially sliding? Sliding on it, and we can't tell, especially the times when he put his cuticle under and he's doing the arc, because I don't know how tight those strings are. Obviously and he how said thick he, they he has calluses, but like when you're starting, do you just bleed all the yeah, time? Because that happens with guitar. Like yeah. Brian Adams said, play it till my fingers bled. That's what happens when you're a guitar player. Yeah. When you start playing, your your fingers are gonna blister. If you're playing a lot, you'll bleed and you have to build the calluses. Yeah. Clearly you hit on your freaking cuticles. That's insane. That looks, sounds painful. Unless the sound, it's a it's a it's a beautiful, haunting, it's a beautiful, beautiful, instrument. weeping with a, with sound. With a wide range of, yeah, you could do an entire score with just that instrument, I feel like. That would be very cool. Yeah, maybe they have. You yeah, guys. They very well may have. Uh, Watch Satyajit Rai's done it and I never even knew, right? That was cool, though. Super, super, super cool. Super cool. Just learned so much. So if you have more videos like that, please send them our way. You know we like stuff like this. I hope you do, too. Let us know what other videos we can react to down below. Da <laughs> <laughs>